it's Shankar, S-A-N-K-A-R. Um, I'm from Detroit School of Business, uh, Ontario, Canada. And my name is Chow Lei. I am from the University of St. Thomas's full-time MBA program. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hari. I'm from Central European University Business School, and I'm representing the college. We are from both. Hi, my name is Shanna Schultz. I'm from Texas State University. I study in the communications department. Hi, I'm Leon Gasselman. I'm from the Neoma Business School in Rouen, France. From where? In France, school. It's spell it. Oh. <laughs> 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 e -M. Got it. All right. And that's Ruin Business School? Yeah, it's a, the former Ruin Business School. It's now New Business School. Wait, acquired another. It's now what? Neoma, N-E-O, and Oh, yes, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam. Um, I'm representing the University of Oxford. Representing what? University of Oxford. Oh, Oxford, well, sure. I've heard of that. <laughs> All right, so we've got, uh, is it group? Group? De group. De group, that's right. I knew that. Uh, De group. G R O O T E? Yes. And that's up in Canada? Yes. And you're from? Good old Minnesota. University of St. Thomas. And we've got Central University. Central Cent European University. European University. Um, business School? Yes. Where is that located? Budapest. Ah, I've been to Budapest. Beautiful city. Yeah. And you're from? <coughs> Texas State University in San Marcos, Texas. It's a, I know, I know. <laughs> Now name, no, Neoma, what? Neoma. Neoma. Uh, and then Oxford in England. What a national, international contingent. Yes. Very okay. Um, so we'll go, let's make sure we get the order right. We're going to go, we're going to start with Texas State first because of certain time issues. And then you'd like to go second. Got it? <laughs> And who would like to go third? Okay. What? Oh, would you like to go third? I put my bid in early. Yeah. Early? Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. No. Fight about it. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Three. And then European School of Business. Um, and then. Okay. <laughs> Me? <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Why don't you all start? What What are these ethical issues that are that are involved with ABC? I, I don't I don't know what's going on. So I'm just talking. I'm not doing my 90 second presentation. No, right? no, just, not yet. Just talk, well, I'm incredibly concerned with <laughs> ABC's exploitation of garment workers in developing countries. I find it morally repugnant that they continually do this, even though the international community has firmly claimed that they don't work, don't like that. No. Nope. Awful. Terrible. Well, you know, speaking of garments, um, we're in the retail business, and you know, one of the ways that we want to stay competitive, we've gone offshore and gone to other countries to to drive our prices down. And our competitors, we've noticed, are engaging in data mining. Financially, it makes perfect sense, but uh, I think today it would be worthwhile for us to discuss why and how we should engage in that practice. You know, just coming over to the developing countries, ABC also specializes in electronics and its related trash, like e-waste. So right now we. We're doing it, well, we could do it here in North America, but then it's really expensive. So we're just exporting it to developing countries and getting it down there, because it's just really cheap and more profitable. But the people who are working on our electronics there are really getting harmed because of what we're doing. So this is like another concern which has to be like addressed. I guess, as you know, NBC is also active in the Swiss banking system. <laughs> and it's not a huge problem there because actually there are unethical activities going on concerning tax evasion and also the involvement of illegal um, organizations which are inactively getting supported. So we're going to be talking about that as much. 
uh, having uh, outsourced our production, does that imply we have outsourced our responsibilities as well? That, that's concerning all, all you people who have outsourced your production to developing regions. So I think we need to address that. <laughs> well, I'm certainly worried about all your points. Um, but I think we have an issue that's close to home. I know looking at broader issues is, is very important for businesses, but it's also important to think what happens within our own, our own doors, our own home. I'm particularly worried about the lack of, of vegetarian alternatives that actually appeal to consumers in our canteen. I mean, we know that uh, vegetarian alternatives are much better for the environment and much better for the health of consumers. So why aren't we encouraging our employees to actually take part in this? It's a lot of problems ABC has. It's good, it's good they have us here to, to tackle those issues. It is. <laughs> this is a very complex company. <laughs> now, who is a very technologically uh, expert person who can sit up here with me and help me with this darn clock. <laughs> Perfect. Bring, bring that chair over. And I should introduce myself. My name is Mike Hoffman, and I'm the executive director. I want to get this to one point, one minute and 30 seconds. And uh, I'm the executive director of the Center for Business Ethics at Bentley University. No, it's not <laughs> I'm glad you thought so, I mean, because it makes me feel better. Okay, uh, do you have yours ready to start? I believe I do. Okay. Maybe a technological disaster. Okay, Texas, you're on. 1,124. That's the number of Bangladeshi bodies that line the back door of Gap Incorporated under the broken promise of Gap's supposed commitment to increasing international worker protection. Gap's weak attempt to renew their brand promise by formulating the Alliance for Bangladeshi Safety fails to meet international demands for increased corporate ethics. By failing to sign the Accord for Bangladeshi Safety and Worker Regulations, their principles and their promises are not backed by their practices, leaving you in the shadows of empty rhetoric and faulty assurances. The time for GAP to renew their promise and become glo globally conscious is now. They must infuse the golden rule standard into their operating protocol and their business vision. By utilizing the business virtue ethics and infusing it in the lifeblood of GAP, by utilizing fairness, toughness, honesty, and trust, the very depths of what it means to treat others with dignity and respect, they can begin to meet this ethical demand. GAP has a unique opportunity, as well as ABC, to begin to grow their profits, not just by looking at how much money they can get, but rather investing in their workers and their personhood, because that's when you truly get sustainable corporate growth. The chance for GAP and ABC to be the globally conscious symbol of true retail is now. There can't be a delay. Lives depend on it. We must act. Great, we're setting the clock. Nice tie in with ABC. <laughs> <laughs> I won't touch it anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. It's all right. You do that, I'll get, get some water for myself. <laughs> Stop. Can you make some of your, whatever you're ready, counts. All right. That's right. I can start? Okay, friends, you're on. All right. Dear colleagues, I know you're all very, very concerned about the business impact of the white money strategy and what ha will have on the um, Swiss banking sector. But I think we need to talk about the ethical problems as well. As you know, we, like for decades now, we actually actively supported tax evasion and also illegal organizations by hiding their money. For example, do you know that over 40% of the Indian GDP lies on lies with black money in our accounts? And if that money would go back to India, they could actually pay all their external debts with that. Also, did you know that we were kind of involved in kind of activities? Because we actually accepted their money, managed it, and therefore we helped them to finance themselves and finance activities like 9-11. I guess we all don't want to be involved in that, right? 
all, so I think we have two compa main competitive advantages in, uh, in Switzerland. The first one is the banking secrecy law. And the second one, it's the stability and also the trustworthiness of our country and of our sector. We will lose the first one. We all know that due to big banks like UBS and Bank of Italy being sued by the US authorities for that. So we really have to actually concentrate on the second main uh, competitive advantage. And the stability and trustworthiness of our sector can only be saved if we start acting ethically correct by implementing the white money strategy. That is the only solution I can see for ourselves, our jobs, and our sector. Okay. Um, we lost Budapest. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you pop it in? I need to contextualize before, if that's okay. I'm sorry? Is it okay to contextualize how my... Before we start? Yeah, briefly. I thought that's kind of what you did at the beginning. Oh, well, well the talk is essentially I'm pitching to Beyond Meat, who a uh, plant-based alternative meat company. I'm pitching to them a new product called Pure Meat which is a lab-grown alternative to meat. It's animal produced. It's a non-GMO product that can replicate meat directly. Okay. Uh, you, you ready to go? <laughs> yeah, I got this. Okay. Eight billion animals are killed in the US each year for human consumption. Yeah, here's your group. Oh, apologies. <laughs> These animals can be castrated, dehorned, and branded without the aid of, of, of painkillers, which causes immense physical and psychological trauma. Pure meat, our product, obliterates this necessity. It also obliterates the wastefulness of current meat production. Currently, only 50% of the animal is actually available for human consumption. The rest is waste. Meat production is currently a very wasteful wasteful process. 37%, moreover, of methane is produced in this process, which is a 20 times more globally warming gas than even CO2. Meat production, as it can currently know, also poses a direct health risk. The WHO earlier this year discovered that 85% of Americans are now resistant to antibiotics as a direct result of the overuse of antibiotics in animal meat production. However, we need to give animals these antibiotics in order to prevent health scares and epidemics such as swine flu. It's a catch-22. We are at a dilemma, therefore. Do we continue to produce and consume meat as we know it, or do we opt for an ethically responsible alternative, pure meat? Before I proceed, I would like to set the stage as well. As the consulting head of uh, ABC, I would like to address uh, other groups of ABC who are sourcing their garments from Bangladesh. You're the consulting head, also. Yes. Group. Okay. So just <laughs> I promoted myself. <laughs> Good to know. The question we are faced with isn't easy, especially since it is entangled in a business environment. The moral standards and code of ethics that we abide by are the same at home and at work. Each of our group of companies has its own ethics, a code of ethics that requires the employees to form at the highest ethical standards. Then why should our moral standards and code of ethics be different when we do business in a different country? Now, fighting this problem is important because merely signing agreements like the Accord is like fighting cancer with vitamins. The real problem here is not identified. If we consider the system as a whole, the MNCs are the body, the factory is the food, and the middleman is the blood, but the blood has gone bad, so, and we have to treat this disease. What we, do, what we have to do now is define a new way of CSR, 
we have the resources, we have the incentive right now because there is interest on the subject. People are aware the whole world is watching our actions. We need to grab this opportunity and we need to define ourselves. Thank you. Okay, Canada. <laughs> I'm so proud to be working for APC, a company that reaches out to billions of people through our products. But does our responsibility end when we make a sale? We made commitment to be ethical champions, but are we doing enough? Despite our efforts to regulate e-waste, 20 to 30% 20 to of what we produce ends up in e-waste dump sites in developing countries like India, China, Ghana, and Pakistan. In Guyu, a city in China alone, 100,000 workers break down and burn our products to extract whatever they can. Working in these environments, these workers are exposed to chemicals like cadmium, barium, and lead, bleeding to paralysis, cancer, and even death. The chemicals leak into the water and soil system and affect another 200,000 people living within this community. Not only are their homes destroyed, they have no means to go back to farming. E-waste, their only source of income, is now killing them. We have the means and the measures to make a difference now. If we don't do anything, we are being an accessory to these murders. I understand exporting and processing these e-waste in the developing countries saves millions of dollars for us, but a proper and ethical processing facility needs to be in place to make this win-lose situation into a win-win situation. Because ABC, the company that I am so proud to work for, is not afraid to do the right thing. Minnesota. Trying to get our timing right. That's so, uh, right. When you're ready. Just hit start. Sit start. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Here at ABC, our mission is very similar to a retailer named One Stop. Their mission is to provide the best retail experience to all their customers under one roof. Today, I want to discuss our valued customer, Anna, who is in the stage. She walks into our store, spends 20 to 40 minutes, and 80% of the time, she can't find what she wants. I researched a Harvard Business Review, and it lets us know that we can better her experience by personalizing it. And we can accomplish this through data mining. But here at ABC, like One Stop, we shouldn't just engage in data mining. We should do what they're doing and not, and engage data mining in the right way. By doing so, we will respect and add value to our customers, our employees, and our shareholders. After reviewing our ethics code of conduct, I strongly encourage our team to engage in data mining in the following three ways. Number one, always have our customers opt in before sharing their personal information. Respect that right. Number two, form a review board that includes external and internal stakeholders to help us guide our business practices. And number three, transparency. <coughs> Let our customers know how, what, and why we are collecting their data. And that is to provide the best shopping experience. It should be the same way here in the US as in the UK. As simple as ABC. Perfect timing. Uh, wow. ABC has a whole lot of ethical issues, but I thought you all did a great job. Why don't we give them a great job? Thank you, Anna. <laughs> well, now, uh, that's going to make my job extremely difficult. And I need, uh, as they say, some time to think about it, because you all did wonderfully, I thought. Uh, what a job in 90 seconds to do what you did. Just amazing, just amazing. So congratulations to everyone. And uh, uh, whatever judgment I make, I'm going to go hide somewhere where you can't find me uh, in, in case there's recriminations and retaliations. But uh, please don't feel badly if you there. There are only a couple of winners, and you all did great. And I'm going to have just a heck of a job trying to figure out uh, who should uh, who should win and who should be runner-up and so forth. So. so
super job. Don't you all think so? Yeah. So now, your job is over. My job begins. And uh, go have a great time this afternoon. And back to the pool, whatever. And then we, what do we have? A pizza thing tonight? Thank you. Oh, you got a big help on this.